It's homie time. Hey guys, we finally have the details for Angel Golden Frieza, the transforming one from uh, Tournament of Power. And um, he is physical, so uh, the two types, again, like I said when I did my initial video on this, uh, you know, sort of speculating on what the uh, stats would be, what his kit would be like. I said the two typings I would be completely fine uh, uh, fine for would be um, AGL or physical, and he's physical, so I'm completely fine with this. Um, so let's gonna let's go ahead and look uh, what at what he does here. So again, I am ultra ultra tired, so bear with me here. Uh, I just did the translation on, on Reddit. I'm sure the wiki has a page up for these guys, so go ahead and check them out if you want a more clean view of what this guy is able to do. But here we go. Uh, Frieza Final Form Angel. So the leader skill. Now this is immediately pretty cool. Resurrected Warriors or Otherworld Warriors. Key plus four. HP attack and defense plus 150. Let's actually pull up those categories. So we have Resurrected Warriors over here. And then Otherworld Warriors should be all the way down here somewhere over here. So I'm actually very happy that they didn't introduce a new category here. And I was thinking to myself, if you guys saw my uh, speculation video... I was like, I really can't think of a new category that they would possibly give this guy. So I just gave, thought of like some like very obscure category, and I was like, okay, sure, let's just give him this. And they actually didn't even end up giving a new category, which is great. I really don't want them to keep making new categories constantly, so that's a step in the right direction, honestly, in my opinion. So Resurrected Warriors, right? The biggest thing that comes to my mind is this guy is getting four key under a leader skill, uh, which is really, really good because he's, you know, he, he doesn't really struggle like in immensely for key but his only key link is prepared for battle. Now, this Freeze is not going to link up super well with this guy because Freeze's uh, best key link is Shocking Speed and this guy is prepared for battle. But the leader skill is going to help this guy out for sure if you want to use the Freeze as a floater, which is completely viable. We'll see why in a second. Um, but I think that's actually a pretty cool thing that they did with this. What else? Well, who else can use uh, an extra key on here? I guess L mostly LRs, right? LR Bojack can use that. Um, oh! <laughs> You think this guy's struggling for key? Well, you just throw him under a 4 key leader skill. Um, this guy too, right? I mean, look, you can use this freeze as a leader. Put this guy, um, and uh, where's the... Uh, isn't the uh, in Angel Goku on this category as well? He should be. Somewhere. There he is, right here. Yeah, so you throw a rotation of these guys together under a 4 key leader skill. Like, you're, this guy's going to be just supering, or uh, ETK super attacking every single turn pretty easily. So... This guy having a 4 key leader skill for um, Resurrected Warriors is actually pretty cool. Now, Otherworld Warriors, um, I kind of didn't want this guy to be an Otherworld Warriors leader, but it's not the worst thing ever. This category definitely did need help, but the fact that we just got this guy like not that long ago was like, eh, okay. And you can, you can kind of say the same thing about Resurrected Warriors as well, right? We just got this guy. Well, we didn't just get him. He's, what, like nine months old or something like that? So, I don't know. I really feel like they should have given this guy the Wicked Bloodline leader skill. Um, I mean, again, the only viable Wicked Bloodline leader is Metal Cooler. Yeah, you can technically run this guy as the leader for Wicked Bloodline, right? But he's, he doesn't he doesn't um, technically lead, uh, you know, the Wicked Bloodline category. So I would have preferred uh, instead of other warriors from to have Wicked Bloodline, but I don't think this is a bad leader skill at all. The four key really is going to help a lot of units out. I think so. That's cool. So Super Attack pre-transformed is the Death Psychokinesis, raises defense and causes immense damage and seals Super Attack. So, sealing Super Attacks, guess what? I believe that's the first Wicked Bloodline unit that seals, unless I'm just forgetting about something. Um, I don't think there's another Wicked Blood... Oh no, this guy does seal. But it's only against multiple enemies, am I right? Uh, no. No, it's only... Okay, yeah, he, this, so this guy has a medium chance of sealing on a super attack. But, I mean, yeah, that, that, I believe that's the only sealer on this team, or on this, on this uh, category. Um, so this guy being the only guaranteed sealer is really good for this for this team. And then he also stacks defense infinitely, which is good. Uh, and then his passive is attack and defense plus 100%. Then he gains an additional attack and defense plus 50% for five turns after receiving an attack and... Uh, during that turn in which he gets attacked, he gains a medium chance to evade enemy attacks. So that's like a 25 or 30 percent chance, depending on what they want to go with. And uh, then attacked enemies attack and defense minus 30 percent for two turns. <clears throat> so this guy's bringing a lot of utility, which you generally don't see. Like this, this is exactly what I was talking about when I did my um, uh, speculation video. I said specifically, I really want 
this team doesn't really need more offense. It doesn't really need more defense. What it really needs is some kind of utility unit. And this guy, I think, brings the utility that you need in order to sort of round out the team more. Because this, this category is really not that big. It's not small, but it's not big. Because a lot of this is fluff. A lot of this is just like very old awakenings for like Golden Frieza. You got like SRs in here. You got like Chilled. Like nobody cares about Chilled. Like all these like super strike units. So like a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter. Like look at like all these like SRs and just like just not viable units to run. So realistically, this category really isn't that big. So in order to round this out more, I think they did a really good job in sort of pinpointing where the Wicked Bloodline category needed uh, help with, and they made this guy do exactly what the team needed, I think. So, uh, and then his conditions for transformation, which is, th th these are literally the best possible conditions. <laughs> you cannot get better conditions than this. It's just whenever you want. <laughs> it's whenever you want. So uh, when entering attacking turn just means... Whenever you enter a turn with this unit, you can use the active skill. Just, there's literally not a single restriction, so really, really nice. And uh, you guys might be, might be wondering, oh, well, how come you don't just uh, every single... Like, what's the point of even having this guy being a transforming unit? Why don't you just uh, start out as golden? Um, they share the same lengths. There's no differences there. And the reason is because of this. Uh, because of the, the... Well, this is one of the reasons. Because he infinitely stacks defense. So if you're going up against a longer event, like Legendary Goku event, even Dragon Ball History... You can choose to not transform and stack his defense for a longer period of time so that you can pretty much make this guy immune to taking any damage just because stacking defense is literally like the key to winning against those modes. Um, another reason is if you really want the seal, right? The sealing, like this guy does different things pre-transformed as opposed to transformed. So sealing is really, really important uh, in something like through Battle Road, it can help a lot. And uh, we'll take a look at what he does post uh, transformation as well but th it's really at this and you'll see why in a second um, another thing you could also talk about is this debuffing effect so if you're if you're, if you're going up against i don't know like the um so the new uh, extreme categories for battle stages came out and like the, the third stage in a lot of those uh stages or the, the third fight in a lot of those stages is an enemy with like 30 million health or something it's like really really powerful enemy with like a, a million bajillion fulfillion health right so if you're able to just keep them debuffed the entire time with this guy it's going to make it it's going to make your life a lot easier for the rest of your team and i feel like that's a you know a, a decent argument to keep this guy untransformed because this part is really going to help your team out more than if you just transform i think so that's something to keep in mind as well so there are instances where you just don't want to transform right but i think for the most part you're going to want to sort of do a balance of keeping this guy untransformed and transformed and we'll talk about that in a second but Okay, so the links. Here's where things get interesting. Uh, shocking speed. So there's pros and cons to the shocking speed pick here. I was kind of surprised when I saw that because I assumed he would have the same exact link set as this guy. Um, so he basically loses Brutal Beatdown for shocking speed. And then I think he loses Revival as well for... What does he get instead of Revival? Um, nightmare. Yeah, Nightmare. He gets a Nightmare instead of Revival. Which is fine, right? Um, but I think in terms of shocking speed, like l let's go through here, and I'll, I'll hear about to tell how how much I play this <laughs> this category. So, which of the good units on here have shocking speed and which don't? So this guy does not. This guy does not. This guy does not. Uh, this guy does not. Um, let's see. This guy does. Does not. Does not. Uh, this, this cooler does not. This cooler does. So when he gets his EZA, that could be good. Frieza, full power Frieza does not. Oddly enough, both coolers, both of these metal coolers do have shocking speed, and the Dokkan Fest exclusive does not. So that's kind of weird. I don't know why they did that. Uh, full power Frieza LR does not. LF, uh, Prime Battle Frieza does not as well. Uh, this tournament reward Mecha Frieza does not. Uh, this guy does. We'll talk, we'll talk about him in a minute. Um, and then obviously this guy does not. And this guy does, and this guy does. And I don't know if you do. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, you don't. Okay. So, I would say most of the good units on this category don't have shocking speed. So, it's kind of like a way for them to bridge this Frieza with units that are not on just the Wicked Bloodline team, but also over here, maybe? Who has shocking speed over here? I don't even, like, I guess Metal Cooler, that's it. I don't even, I don't know. Because most of these, oh, actually, does this guy have shocking? I think this guy does. No, he doesn't. Wait, doesn't he? Maybe it's when he transforms. Uh, isn't it when he transforms? He has to have it when he transforms. But, yeah, I don't know. I think I would have actually preferred 
if they kept Shocking Speed as Brutal Beatdown. Because Brutal Beatdown, I believe at level 10 is at, was it 15%? It's either 15 or 20, I don't remember exactly, but that would have made a big difference. Um, this guy doesn't need key, right? You, you, if, you want, if you're going to link him up with this guy, because that, again, this is going to be his best linking partner, or he should be his best linking partner. Uh, well, other than one other unit, which we'll talk about in a second, but this guy um, like becomes a lot better because of this guy's release too. So maybe you wanted to keep Brutal Beat down. I don't know. It's kind of a toss up. Revival, I'm completely fine with them tossing Revival for Nightmare. But overall, I think his link set is pretty good. Uh, I think, I, 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 like I, honestly, I'd rather him have Shocking Speed than Brutal Beat down. Even though I think he would have worked better with um, this guy over here, but. Um, I think for the like for just for the long run of the game and like for this guy's uh, how well this guy can age, Shocking Speed is a more prevalent link overall in the game, so I'm fine with that. Uh, categories are just self-explanatory, and then now we go into transformed Golden Frieza. So Super Attack becomes the Golden Death Blaster. So this is interesting. Massively raises attack for one turn <laughs> and causes immense damage. So massively raising attack. That's like Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta and physical trunks from the Android 13 movie. And I think Tech, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks does it as well on his 11 key super attack. And maybe physical does as well. I don't remember if physical does, but there's very few units in the game that massively raise attack for one turn. I guess Bra does it, but she also stacks it, but she's like a support unit. So it's not as impactful as this, but this is a big deal. Um, I think people look at this unit and they don't even realize that he does this and they don't realize how impactful this is. Like the reason why Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta, or mainly Super Saiyan 4 Goku, can tank as well as he does is because he massively raises his defense on, on Super Attack. If he didn't do that, he'd be like terrible defensively. So this actually makes a big deal in terms of how much damage he can output here. Um, and then the passive. So before we even go into the passive, I think this is a very vanilla unit. Uh, the, the transformed... Um, Angel Golden Freeze. He's very vanilla. He's not super unique. He doesn't do anything that's like, oh wow, I never thought they could do that before. But with a unit in this game, or they're, you know, they're they're thinking out of the box with this one. No, he doesn't do anything like that. Um, so yeah, you, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't really argue against uh, the claim that this guy's boring uh, because I definitely could see that argument. But I think as a whole, he does a lot. So uh, attack and defense plus one hundred twenty percent. So that's just pretty plain. Uh, then he gains an attack and defense plus 80% when launching super attack and great chance to stun the attacked enemy. And then he also reduces damage received by 50% when HP is 49% or less. Whew. So this, right? Great chance of stunning, stunning the enemy. So because this effect is in his passive, it is for the turn only. It does not carry over to the next turn. So let's say you're in through battle road, uh, you transform turn one with this guy and you stun uh, an enemy. That enemy is not going to be stunned in, in the following turn. They're only going to be stunned for the current turn, which I think is actually quite good. And if you compare this unit directly to like Ultimate Gohan, so uh, this is, I'm, I'm telling you right now, a lot of people are going to be doing this, so get ready. But most people consider this guy to be the quote unquote best TUR in the game. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, this guy does not have nearly the utility that Frieza has. Frieza can lower attack and defense, he seals, and if you want to transform him, he can he has a great chance of stunning, which, you know, it, all, this, all that stuff that I just talked about provides a form of defensive utility for your rotation. So it protects your allies. While this guy himself is just like unable to be touched by any damage, this guy is also super tanky, but he also helps his rotation out. While this guy is mo mostly a self-centered unit, which is not a knock on him, I'm just saying, that's how he was designed, and that's how Frieza was designed. So that's the big difference that I see in these two units. Um, and then this actually, it's not like uber useful, but in difficult modes like Super Battle Road, if you get caught with a super attack, like the like in you know the turn where this guy's not on rotation, and then you come into the rotation with this guy and start the rotation below 50% health, he's gonna be like, un he's not gonna be able to take damage from anything because his defense is gonna be so high. And the main thing I want to stress with this unit that I think a lot of people are missing is the fact that this exists on this pre-transformed form this synergizes so well with the fact that he gains defense when he launches super attack because that's going to factor in to the defense he builds up prior to transforming 
So basically, it works the same way as AGL, LR, Super Saiyan 2, Gohan, where he builds up defense, builds up defense, builds up defense, and then when he transforms, that defense carries over to the post-transform state. But this guy, then, this guy then has this, which is going to calculate the defense on Super Attack, taking into effect or taking into account the defense he built up that's already existing on the unit before he supers. So as long as you super like th like two or three times before transforming, this guy's going to be untouchable, even without this part of his passive active. This part of his passive is only here in case you want to transform like turn one, um, and you don't have like the super duper amount of defense that you need to tank like super attacks and super battlers or something like that. If you super like three or four times, or even like two times with the pre-transform Frieza, and then you transform and then you super attack, you're, you're going to have like 500,000 defense. So that's why this is such a powerful effect, considering the fact that you can do this prior to transforming. Um, so that's why I think people are, that's what, what I think people are overlooking with this unit. Um, and I, I think if you just looked at the transformed version um, and you just looked at this unit by himself, you would think he's boring, and I would agree. I do think this, if this was a uh, standalone unit, this would be one of the most boring units in the game, just straight up. And I, I'm like the biggest Frieza fan in the world, and I'm saying that. But I think when you combine um, the playstyle that they're insinuating that you do with this um, first form Frieza as well as the Golden Frieza together as a package of a unit, I think he's fine. Because it, 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 him being able to transform turn one or instantly, it gives you a choice. Um, and it makes you think about what you... Because once you transform, you can't de-transform. Like, you can't be like, oh, damn, I didn't mean to do that. I need, and then go back to you know, the, the pre-transform form. No, you, you have to stick with it if you transform. So you have to be sure of it once you transform that you don't want to go back. Because this guy has a lot of viability to use, um, you know, even without transforming. Like, he's a good just base form unit at turn one. Um, and I think these types of units, where you can choose to transform turn one or not, uh, they did a good job here in making this guy, like, fulfill a role that's different than the transform version. And that's why I really like the design of this unit. Can it be boring? Sure. But I think as a package, um, the choice that this guy gives you, um, and the options that he provides to you, uh, it, are, are really cool. And, and that's why I said, uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I said, this guy really reminds me of uh, STR Cooler because Cooler also gives you that same freedom of choice to where, okay, do I want a support unit or do I want a hard hitter? Um, and I think this guy does a similar thing, except it's less clear with this guy because it's not like, oh, I want a supporter or I want a hard hitter. It's, do I want the utility that, that this guy provides or do I want the other utility that this guy provides while also hitting harder and tanking more? Um, and then depending on the mode you're taking on, you might want to keep this guy on transform. So I think, again, I think this guy does present more of a choice than Cooler, because Cooler is very straightforward, whereas this guy, you have to think a little bit what you want to do before you do it. So I really do like this unit a lot. Okay, I talked a lot about him, but um, let's go ahead and talk about Frieza next, the other one. The, uh, this guy's finally getting a Dokkan Awakening. The Otherworld Warrior Tech Angel Final Form Frieza. So... Leader skills kind of whatever. Super attack, he raises attack and defense permanently. So he stacks attack and defense permanently. It's kind of just, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay, then his passive, he gets attack and defense plus 120%, or attack plus 120% and defense plus 100% when launching super attack. So that's good. Um, and this is really important because he changes into key spheres to rainbow. He is the first Wicked Bloodline unit to change orbs. He's the first orb changer on the Wicked Bloodline category, which is insane, but it's true. So, people are sleeping on this unit. I I'm telling you right now, this guy's going to be like really good for the Wicked Bloodline team. Um, he also reduces damage received by 40% if your entire team consists of characters belonging to, to the Otherworld Warriors category. So, if you're again, if you're running him on the Wicked Bloodline team, you're not going to have his active. But literally just this one sentence is, I guess, sort of two phrases, is, is enough to make this guy good enough to run on, the, on there, I think. Um, Links are prodigies, strongest gun in space, universe's most malevolent, shocking speed, nightmare, other world warriors, and fierce battle. And if you noticed, if you notice his link set, it is the exact same link set as this guy, except this guy has turn of power and this guy has other world warriors. So this guy's actually a really good linking partner with the new Frieza. So that's why they did this, I feel like. Um, and then also to mention with this guy as well, if you run, uh, if you run this guy as a leader, you could actually run the pre-transformed Frieza with the post-transformed Frieza as a rotation, which is, <laughs> that rotation is so stupid. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, so like if you get unlucky and you get both of them starting in the same in the same uh, rotation and like the first uh, rotation of a fight, you can just transform one of them and that's your rotation. 
Like, <laughs> that's what, you could just do that. So, yeah, I think this guy, like, going back to this, is already being underrated. So don't sleep on this Frieza. Uh, now, Cell's interesting. I, Cell, so I, I talked a lot about this Frieza. I talked a lot about this Frieza. Obviously, I'm a big Frieza fanboy. But something that the Cell does, I actually think this is the most interesting mechanic that we're seeing coming out of this data download, even more so than anything this guy does or anything this guy does. So Cell, uh, super attack. He also uh, infinitely stacks attack and defense. Passive is Otherworld Occupation. Attack plus 20% and defense plus 15% per key sphere obtained. All allies key plus two when collecting two or more rainbow key spheres. I love that. It's something we have never seen before. And I, I really like that a lot. So guess what? <laughs> guess what? It makes this guy and this guy like a really good linking partners. Well, not linking partners, but but partners in general, because this guy's for, is creating the int key spheres, or sorry, the uh, rainbow key spheres, and then this guy's collecting them and then giving the whole rotation a plus two key. So they really don't even have to link well in terms of key links, because this guy's giving the whole rotation two key because of the fact that he's getting two key, uh, rainbow key spheres, and then he's also getting an extra boost from the key spheres from his passive. So this is a really good combo. This uh, Frieza and Cell. Um, and then he also has super effective against all types of damage if your entire team consists of characters belonging to the Otherworld Warriors category. So, Otherworld Warriors with these guys on there, it actually could be decent. The only thing is, going back to the category, this is the global side, so we don't have the new units listed here, but a lot of the category, like 90% of the category, are super class units that are not going to link well at all with like freezer or cell units. But the fact that this guy does, actually, does, does give the two key when he collects two more key, uh, rainbow key spheres, you know, that could make a difference um, in terms of them not really necessarily needing to link up super well for the, everyone to get a super attack. So I really like that ability on the cell. I, 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 I hope they expand on this in the future because this is the most interesting ability that they've shown in this data download to me. And that's, that's, that's cool. I like that a lot. And his links are big bad bosses, ultimate life form, fear and faith, shocking speed, nightmare, other warrior first battle. So not terrible if you want to link them up with other cell units. Um, and then the categories are also self-explanatory right there. So. There is my breakdown of the Frieza. I really like him a lot. He's going to be insane. He doesn't just hit hard. He doesn't just chank well. He also provides utility. So, you know, when you're comparing units, keep that in mind because not a lot of other units can do that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you all in the next one.